So flow separation occurs when flow reversal occurs, and this is usually a bad thing because it causes increased drag. But we know enough about the physics of boundary layers now to see how to delay boundary layer separation by delaying flow reversal. When a boundary layer finds itself in an adverse pressure gradient, by which I mean the mean flow is going from a region of low pressure to a region of high pressure, then there is a competition between the pressure gradient pushing backwards and momentum diffusing down from the free stream into the boundary layer. If the pressure gradient is strong or the momentum diffuses down slowly, the boundary layer velocity profile reverses and separation occurs. However, if we increase the rate of momentum transfer from the free stream into the boundary layer, we can force all the fluid to move forwards and the flow to reattach. One way to do this for a given flow speed is to increase the viscosity of the fluid. When the viscosity increases, the rate of momentum transfer increases. And here we see the flow around a cylinder at a Reynolds number of 26, a Reynolds number of 13.1, and a Reynolds number of 9.6. If the free stream velocity is the same and the diameter of the cylinder is the same, then this corresponds to an increase in viscosity, i.e. an increase in momentum transfer from the free stream into the boundary layer, and we can see indeed that the position of the boundary layer separation point moves further towards the rear of the cylinder as the viscosity increases. However, increasing the viscosity of the fluid is usually not possible. For example, you're in an aeroplane, you can't just increase the viscosity of the air that you're flying through. There are other techniques. In the flow over a backward-facing slope, we might have separation at this point, giving rise to a recirculation zone behind the slope. And the separation point here arises because the flow downstream is moving in the opposite direction to the free stream, whereas the flow upstream is moving with the free stream. And the flow separates because there is not sufficient momentum diffusion from the free stream into the boundary layer to stop the flow from reversing around this point. So what we can do instead is just inject some high momentum fluid just upstream of the separation point. And when we do that, the boundary layer is pushed downstream and the flow reattaches. This is part of the principle behind the leading edge slats on wings that one sometimes sees on takeoff and landing. The flow around the front of the slat by this point is becoming tired, low momentum, so at that point some fast air comes in underneath, injecting high momentum fluid into the boundary layer, which then keeps it attached over the main part of the wing. Another technique to avoid separation of a boundary layer is to suck the low momentum fluid out of the boundary layer. For example, a wing at high angle of attack might have streamlines looking like this. So around this point of the wing, the boundary layer flow is only just moving in the same direction as the free stream. And so one can put a porous membrane here and suck the fluid into the wing. When you do this over the front region of the wing, the boundary layer remains attached over the top surface of the wing. This has been achieved on aeroplanes in flight, but it requires a great deal of power and is not the most practical method to achieve the desired performance.